Hey guys and welcome back to another Unmentioned 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over an alarm or siren system. So in this we can trigger alarms or sirens to turn on and turn off whenever you want for whatever reason you want. And this is also going to be able to turn on all of the sirens across the whole map. So this might be good for example if you have a sort of weather game where there might be tornadoes or tsunamis or earthquakes or anything else in your game you might want to send off sirens and that's kind of the example I'm kind of going for so bad weather the siren goes off it's going to set them off across a whole area or you might want this so for example if you walk into a house all the alarms in the house will go off you can set this up however you want but that's how I'm going to do it so if I hit play I can show you what I'm going to make so I get in you can see I have an alarm here and I have some dotted about the map as well you can kind of see one over in the distance there just in this example I'm going to be pressing one to turn it on and two to turn it off but I am going to show you how to do it other ways as well so again for example when a storm spawns in it sets off the alarms or other stuff like that so if I press one and you hear that it's turned on it's fading in nicely like so and you can see it is directional for where it is as well now if I have to run away from this the further away I get it is going to get quieter and fade out slowly like so now because it's quite a big alarm I've set the distance to be quite far and if I get further over here you can now start to hear the one which is over here so again they've both turned on when I wanted them to. And if I keep running around the map, you'll hear that the different ones around the map are turned on, playing how they should do. And if I were to press 2, you'll hear that they will slowly fade out and turn off, working perfectly like so. So again, we're going to be setting up this basic alarm and siren system today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import our static mesh and our sound effects which we're going to be using. So I've just got this nice and simple siren static mesh which I've got here and what I did was I downloaded a free one which was for a siren head and I just removed his head, added a pole and added some plates inside to remove the mouth. So again, use what you've got, nice and simple and I've also got this sound effect off of freesound.org which you can hear there, it's quite loud default so I'm not going to play it too much but you did hear it, I just got it from freesound.org and cut it to make a nice loop instead of the whole thing. Once you've imported your mesh and sound effect, we want to modify the sound effect a little bit more. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to create a queue, opening it up like so. And the sound queue means that we can use directional audio on it. So what we want to do first is we actually want to also make sure this is looping. So we can take looping there, but sometimes for some reason it doesn't always work. So a way to make sure it does always work is to just drag out looping from the sound there, the output going into the output like so. So that says enveloper not looping. So again, I'm not sure why just ticking looping there doesn't always work. I tried it earlier, I've tried it many times before. Sometimes does it, sometimes doesn't. But having a looping there always works. And with everything deselected, we're going to scroll down on the left till we find override attenuation and tick that. And that is so we can now change the attenuation or the space in which we're going to be able to hear it. So inner radius is the full volume, fall off distance is where it's a little bit quieter. So if I were to show you this, you can see that if I drag in a sound cue, this inner circle here is the inner radius, so it's full volume, and this bigger circle is the fall off radius where it's fading in and out depending on how close or far away you are from the actual cue itself. So what you can do is you can obviously just place it in the level to get a reference to see it and increase and decrease these to get whatever value you want. I'm just going to use the value which I found earlier when messing about with this, which was 10,000 on the inner radius and 20,000 on the fall off distance. Now again, you can choose whichever ones you like, but that worked well enough for me, because it's quite big for an actual big siren like this, you'd expect it to be very loud, but it isn't too big where it covers the whole map. So again, choose whatever you want. And once you set that up, we can delete it from inside the level. And now we need to create the blueprint for a siren, or your alarm system. So I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm gonna name this one Siren BP, opening that up straight away. In here I'm going to add a component adding a static mesh with this one being my siren static mesh which I've imported which again is your siren or alarm or whatever you want. Now for me I'm going to scale this down to be 0.3 instead of 1 just because it's a little bit too big at the full scale. So all we've got is a static mesh of our siren. Then we also want to add another component in here adding just simply an audio like so and this audio is going to be the audio cue we just made which for me I believe was called Siren Loop Q, like so. And we don't need to change anything else in here because we've already just set up the attenuation and the looping and everything else we needed to inside of the queue here. So we can compile and save that. This is all we need to do in the viewport of the blueprint. So now let's go to the event graph. I'm going to delete these three nodes here 
and then hold down P, left click to get event begin play. And out of this, what I'm going to do straight away is get the audio and get a stop. And that's just so that when we first begin the game, the sirens aren't going to be playing by default because that's not how I want it to work. Then underneath this, I'm going to right click, add a custom event, naming this activate siren, like so. And what I'm going to do from this is again, get the audio, drag out and get fade in. So we're going to fade in the audio. Now you can just use play if you want, but I think it's going to sound a bit better to have it fade in nicely. I'm going to set the fade in duration to be 5, which is 5 seconds, and keep the level to be 1, because I want it to go to full volume. If you don't want it to be full volume, then just set that to be whatever volume you want it to go to. Then under this, I'm going to right click and add another custom event called deactivate siren, and as you may guess, it's just the opposite of activate, so instead of fade in, we're going to fade out. Now I'm going to set the exact same parameters so it will be 5 seconds and this time it's, instead of going from 0 to 1, it will go from 1 to 0. So fade volume level is 0. So we can compile, save that and that is very simply all we need to do in this blueprint. We just need to set up a custom event for activating the siren and a custom event for deactivating the siren. So fading in and fading out, turning on and off the audio. And what we need to do next is go to another blueprint. Now for me, I'm going to be doing this in the game mode blueprint but this is just going to be wherever you want to be able to activate and deactivate the sirens. So this could be in your weather blueprint or any other blueprint like that. But the game mode is always a good one to put it in if you're not sure. Because you can always cast to the game mode to activate this. So for me that's going to be content, third person BP, blueprints, third person game mode. And in here it's very very simple as well. We're doing something similar to what we just did in the siren BP. So we're going to right click, add another custom event naming this again activate but sirens this time not siren so it's multiple because this is how we're going to be activating and deactivating all of them at once and to do that it's nice and simple we come out and get all actors of class with the act class being our siren bp or whatever it is that you named it and that is going to get all of the sirens inside of the level the out actor is going to be a for each loop like so we're going to get every single element of the sirens in our level put that into an array into a for loop so it goes through each individual one. And the array element we're going to just simply activate siren calling the custom event we just made. So for every single siren in the level it is going to activate it i.e turning on so again we're now turning on all of the sirens in the level or in the house or whatever it is which you wanted to set up. So now underneath this we're going to do basically the opposite. So again right click add custom event deactivate sirens and we can just copy and paste get all actor of class and for each loop because we again need the siren bp for each loop but this time it's going to be deactivate siren instead of activate siren that is all we need to do in here nice and simple so again what we're doing is now accessing the custom events we just made for activating and deactivating the siren individually and this is going to be doing it for all of them in the level so it turns on and off all of the sirens so we're going to compile save and close this now what we need to do is call that custom event. So again, this is where you're going to want to change it dependent on your system. So again, if it's when you walk into a house, you might want to do this off of maybe a box collision on the level blueprint, or if it's for a weather system, maybe in your weather blueprint when you spawn an earthquake or spawn a storm or a tsunami or anything, that will then also call this custom event. But again, for me, I'm going to be just doing this in the character blueprint when I press one or two much more simplistic system but it works the exact same way which I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to right click in my event graph and again just simply get the one keyboard event and out of pressed I'm going to cast to my third person game mode as that is the blueprint in which I made the custom events in just now. Object is obviously going to be get game mode and then as third person game mode what I want to do is just simply call the function activate sirens and then under this I'm going to get the two keyboard event Again, cast a third person game mode with the object being get game mode, and this time I'm going to simply call the function deactivate sirens. So I'll compile, save, and I'll show you again what this is doing. So if I were to just open everything which I've closed. So what's going to happen is when I press 1, it's going to call the function of activate sirens, which is in the game mode, and when I call that function, it's going to get every siren in the level and call the function activate siren, which is going to simply just fade in the audio. And again, it's the exact same thing for deactivating, except it then calls fade out. So this should now work perfectly for us. So we'll close this and we'll place them in our level. So I'm going to place these in my level like so, that is all we need to do, and then it should work. 
and I'll get back to you once I've done that. So now I've placed nine sirens in my map just in the grid formation just to make it nice and simple to test out. I'm going to hit play and see if this works. So you see we can't hear it yet but if I press one it's going to fade in nicely like so and you can see we can hear it on the siren it's directional. And if I were to run over here it is going to slowly fade out so it's going to get quieter the further away we get and if we get over here we should hear one start fading in over here wherever it is it's over there I've ran past it or if I keep going over this way we're going to hear this one as well as I get closer towards it as you can hear there. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. we set up the system in which we can activate and deactivate all sirens or alarms in our level or in our house or again however you want to set it up which works perfectly like this for again any system which you want. So we fade them in and fade them out all at the same time. So this one is now turning off and they should all have turned off as well. So if I were to go over to this one it shouldn't be playing. As you can hear there it is not playing and if I press 1 it's going to turn on and if I go back over to this one over here it should also be playing. As you can hear here it is now fading in perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.